A persistent carbon, also known as stable carbon is a type of carbon demonstrating particular stability. The best known examples and by far largest subgroup are the N-heterocyclic carbons NHC, sometimes called Arduengo carbons, for example diaminocarbenes with the general formula R2N2C, where the R S are typically alkyl and aryl groups. The groups can be linked to give heterocyclic carbons, such as those derived from imidazole, imidazoline, thiazole or triazole. Traditionally carbons are viewed as so reactive that were only studied indirectly, e.g. by trapping reactions. This situation has changed dramatically with the emergence of persistent carbons. Although they are fairly reactive substances, i.e., undergoing dimerization, many can be isolated as pure substances. Persistent carbons can exist in the singlet or the triplet states with the singlet state carbons being more stable. The relative stability of these compounds is only partly due to steric hindrance by bulky groups. Some singlet carbons are thermodynamically stable in the absence of moisture and in most cases, oxygen, and can be isolated and indefinitely stored. Others dimerize slowly over days. Triplet state carbons have half-lives measured in seconds, and therefore can be observed but not stored. History Early evidence in 1957, Ronald Breslow proposed that a relatively stable nucleophilic carbon, a thiazol 2 ulidine derivative, was involved in the catalytic cycle of vitamin B1 thiamine that yields furin from furfural. In this cycle, the vitamin's thiazolium ring exchanges a hydrogen atom attached to carbon 2 of the ring for a furfural residue. In deuterated water, the C2 proton was found to rapidly exchange for a deuteron in a statistical equilibrium. This exchange was proposed to proceed via intermediacy of a thiazol 2 ulidine In 2012 the isolation of the so-called Breslow intermediate was reported. In 1960, Wanslick and co-workers conjectured that carbons derived from dihydroimidazol 2 ulidine were produced by vacuum pyrolysis of the corresponding two trichloromethyl dihydroimidazole compounds with the loss of chloroform. They conjectured that the carbon existed in equilibrium with its dimer, a tetraaminoethylene derivative, the so-called Wanslick equilibrium. This conjecture was challenged by Lamal and co-workers in 1964, who presented evidence that the dimer did not dissociate, and by Winberg in 1965. However, subsequent experiments by Dank, Hermann and others have confirmed this equilibrium, albeit in specific circumstances. Isolation of persistent carbons. In 1970, Wanslick's group generated imidazol 2 ulidine carbons by the deprotonation of an imidazolium salt. Wanslick as well as Hoffman, proposed that these imidazole-based carbons should be more stable than their 4,5-dehydro analogues, due to Huckel-type aromaticity. Wanslick did not however isolate imidazol 2 ulidines, but instead their coordination compounds with mercury and isothiocyanate. In 1988, Bertrand and others isolated a phosphenocarbene. These species can be represented as either a lambda 3 phosphenocarbene or lambda 5 phosphoacetylene. These compounds were called push pull carbons in reference to the contrasting electron affinities of the phosphorus and silicon atoms. They exhibit both carbenic and alkynic reactivity. An X-ray structure of this molecule has not been obtained and at the time of publication some doubt remained as to their exact carbenic nature. In 1991, a stable, isolated, and crystalline diaminocarbene, which can be represented as a carbon or a nitrogen carbon lide, was obtained by Arduengo and co-workers, by deprotonation of an imidazolium chloride with a strong base. This carbon, the forerunner of a large family of carbons with the imidazol 2 ulidine core, was found to be indefinitely stable at room temperature in the absence of oxygen and moisture, and melted at 240 to 241 degrees Celsius without decomposition. Another interesting chemical property of this ulitic compound was a characteristic resonance in the 13 cnmr spectrum at 211 ppm for the carbenic atom. The X-ray structure revealed longer NC bond lengths in the ring of the carbon than in the parent imidazolium compound, indicating that there was very little double bond character to these bonds. 
The first air stable eulitic carbon, a chlorinated member of the IMIDAZOL2 eulidine family, was obtained in 1997. In 2000, Bertrand obtained additional carbons of the phosphonyl type, including phosphonyl trifluoromethyl carbon, stable in solution at minus 30 degrees Celsius, and a moderately stable amino aryl carbon with only one heteroatom adjacent to the carbonic atom. Factors affecting stability of heteroatom stabilized carbons. The stability of Arduengo carbons was initially attributed to the bulky n adamantyl substituents, which prevents the carbon from dimerizing due to steric hindrance. However, Arduengo's group later obtained an imidazol 2 ulidine in which the n adamantyl groups were replaced with methyl groups, showing that steric hindrance was not the predominant stabilizing factor. Instead imidazole 2 ulidines are thermodynamically stable. It had been also conjectured that the double bond between carbons 4 and 5 of the imidazoleum ring backbone, which gave aromatic character to that system, was important for the carbon's stability. This conjecture was disproved in 1995 by Arduengo. S group, who obtained a derivative of dihydroimidazol 2 ulidine lacking the double bond. The thermodynamical stability in this compound, and the role of steric protection in preventing dimerization, has been a topic of some dispute. The first acyclic persistent carbon was reported in 1996, thus showing that a cyclic backbone was not necessary for their stability. Unlike the cyclic derivatives, the acyclic carbons are flexible with respect to rotation of the bonds to the carbonic atom. By measuring the barrier to rotation of these bonds, the extent of their double bond character could be measured, and the eulitic nature of this carbon could be determined. Like the cyclic diaminocarbenes, unhindered variants tend to dimerize. Until 1997, all stable carbons were stabilized by two nitrogen centers bound to the carbonic atom. This pattern was broken in 1997–1998 with the synthesis of a THIAZOL2 ulidine derivative by Arduengo's group and an aminotheocarbene and an aminooxycarbene. In these stable compounds, the carbenic atom lies between a nitrogen atom and either a sulfur or oxygen atom. However, these carbons are not thermodynamically stable as decomposition and dimerization have been observed for unhindered examples. A more radical development was the synthesis in 2006 of bis diisopropylamino cyclopropanolidine by Bertrand's group. In this compound, which is stable at room temperature, the carbon atom is connected to two carbon atoms, in a three-member ring that retains the aromaticity and geometry of the cyclopropanolidine ring. This example demonstrated that the presence of heteroatoms next to the carbon is not necessary for stability, either. Classes of stable carbons The following are examples of the classes of stable carbons isolated to date. IMIDAZOL2-ulidines The first stable carbons to be isolated were based on an imidazole ring, with the hydrogen in carbon-2 of the ring between the two nitrogen atoms removed, and other hydrogens replaced by various groups. These imidazol 2 ulidines are still the most stable and the most well-studied and understood family of persistent carbons. A considerable range of imidazol 2 ulidines have been synthesized, including those in which the 1, 3 positions have been functionalized with alkyl, aryl, alkaloxy, alkylamino, alkylphosphino and even chiral substituents. In particular, substitution of two chlorine atoms for the two hydrogens at ring positions 4 and 5 yielded the first air stable carbon. Its extra stability probably results from the electron withdrawing effect of the chlorine substituents, which reduce the electron density on the carbon atom bearing the lone pair, via induction through the sigma backbone. Molecules containing two and even three imidazol 2 ulidine groups have also been synthesized. Imidazole based carbons are thermodynamically stable and generally have diagnostic 13 CNMR chemical shift values between 210 to 230 ppm for the carbenic carbon. Typically, X ray structures of these molecules show NCN bond angles of 101 to 102 degrees. TRIAZOL5 ulidines 
Another family of persistent carbons are based on the 1, 2, 4 triazole ring, with the unfilled orbitals in carbon 5 of this ring. The triazol 5 ulidines pictured below were first prepared by enders and co workers by vacuum pyrolysis through loss of methanol from two methoxytriazoles. Only a limited range of these molecules have been reported, with the triphenyl substituted molecule being commercially available. Triazole based carbons are thermodynamically stable and have diagnostic 13 CNMR chemical shift values between 210 to 220 ppm for the carbenic carbon. The X-ray structure of the triphenyl substituted carbon above shows an NCN bond angle of Ca, 101 degrees. The 5-methoxytriazole precursor to this carbon was made by the treatment of a triazolium salt with sodium methoxide, which attacks as a nucleophile. This may indicate that these carbons are less aromatic than imidazol 2 ulidines as the imidazolium precursors do not react with nucleophiles due to the resultant loss of aromaticity. Other diaminocarbenes Carbons that formally derive from imidazole 2 ulidines by substitution of sulfur, oxygen, or other calcogens for both alpha nitrogens are expected to be unstable, as they have the potential to dissociate into an alkyne and a carbon decalcogenide X1 equals C equals X2. The two families above can be seen as special cases of a broader class of compounds which have a carbenic atom bridging two nitrogen atoms. A range of such diaminocarbenes have been prepared principally by Roger Alder's research group. In some of these compounds, the NCN unit is a member of a five- or six-membered non-aromatic ring, including a bicyclic example. In other examples, the adjacent nitrogens are connected only through the carbenic atom, and may or may not be part of separate rings. Unlike the aromatic imidazol 2 ulidines or triazol 5 ulidines these carbons appear not to be thermodynamically stable, as shown by the dimerization of some unhindered cyclic and acyclic examples. Studies suggest that these carbons dimerize via acid-catalyzed dimerization as in the Wanslick equilibrium. Diaminocarbenes have diagnostic 13 CNMR chemical shift values between 230 to 270 ppm for the carbenic atom. The X-ray structure of DIHYDROIMIDAZOLE2 ulidine shows a NCN bond angle of Ca. 106 degrees, whilst the angle of the acyclic carbon is 121 degrees, both greater than those seen for IMIDAZOL2 ulidines. Heteroaminocarbons There exist several variants of the stable carbons above where one of the nitrogen atoms adjacent to the carbon center the alpha nitrogens has been replaced by an alternative heteroatom, such as oxygen, sulfur, or phosphorus. In particular, the formal substitution of sulfur for one of the nitrogens in imidazole would yield the aromatic heterocyclic compound thiazole. A thiazole-based carbon analogous to the carbon postulated by Breslow has been prepared and characterized by X-ray crystallography. Other non-aromatic aminocarbenes with O, S and P atoms adjacent IE alpha to the carbon center have been prepared, e.g. thio and oxyaminium-based carbons have been characterized by X-ray crystallography. Since oxygen and sulfur are divalent, steric protection of the carbenic center is limited especially when the NCX unit is part of a ring. These acyclic carbons have diagnostic 13 CNMR chemical shift values between 250 to 300 ppm for the carbenic carbon, further downfield than any other types of stable carbon. X-ray structures have shown NCX bond angles of Ca. 104 degrees and 109 degrees respectively. Non-amino carbons the reaction of carbon disulfide CS2 with electron-deficient acetylene derivatives is proposed to give transient 1,3-dithiolium carbons i.e. where X1 X2 S, which then dimerize to give derivatives of tetrathiofulvine. Thus it is possible that the reverse of this process might be occurring in similar carbons. Bertrand's carbons in Bertrand's persistent carbons, the unsaturated carbon is bonded to a phosphorus and a silicon. 
However, these compounds seem to exhibit some alkynic properties, and when published the exact carbenic nature of these red oils was in debate. Other nucleophilic carbons One stable N-heterocyclic carbon has a structure analogous to borazine with one boron atom replaced by a methylene group. This results in a planar 6-electron compound. Cyclopropanolidines. Another family of carbons is based on a cyclopropanolidine core, a three-carbon ring with a double bond between the two atoms adjacent to the carbenic one. This family is exemplified by bis diisopropylamino cyclopropanolidine. Triplet state carbons in 2001, Hideo Tomioka and his associates were able to produce a comparatively stable triplet carbon bis carbon, with a half-life of 19 minutes, by taking advantage of electron delocalization. In 2006 a triplet carbon was reported by the same group with a half-life of 40 minutes. This carbon is prepared by a photochemical decomposition of a diazomethane precursor by 300 nanometer light in benzene with expulsion of nitrogen gas. Exposure to oxygen a triplet radical converts this carbon to the corresponding benzophenone. The diphenylmethane compound is formed when it is trapped by 1,4-cyclohexidin. As with the other carbons, this species contains large bulky substituents, namely bromine and the trifluoromethyl groups on the phenyl rings, that shield the carbon and prevent or slow down the process of dimerization to a 1,1,2,2-tetra phenyl alkene. Based on computer simulations, the distance of the divalent carbon atom to its neighbors is claimed to be 138 picometers with a bond angle of 158.8 degrees. The planes of the phenyl groups are almost at right angles to each other the dihedral angle being 85.7 degrees. Mesoionic carbons Mesoionic carbons mics are similar to N-heterocyclic carbons NHCs except that canonical resonance structures with the carbon depicted cannot be drawn without adding additional charges. Mesoionic carbons are also referred to as abnormal N-heterocyclic carbons ANHC or remote N-heterocyclic carbons RNHC. A variety of free carbons can be isolated and are stable at room temperature. Other free carbons are not stable and are susceptible to intermolecular decomposition pathways. Chemical properties Basicity and nucleophilicity The imidazol 2 ulidines are strong bases, having a pKa of Ca. 24 for the conjugate acid in dimethyl sulfoxide DMSO. However, further work showed that diaminocarbenes will deprotonate the DMSO solvent, with the resulting anion reacting with the resulting amidinium salt. Reaction of imidazol 2 ulidines with 1-bromohexane gave 90% of the 2-substituted adduct, with only 10% of the corresponding alkene, indicating that these molecules are also reasonably nucleophilic. pKa values for the conjugate acids of several NHC families have been examined in aqueous solution. pKa values of triazolium ions lie in the range 16.5 to 17.8, around 3 pKa units more acidic than related imidazolium ions. Dimerization At one time, stable carbons were thought to reversibly dimerize through the so-called Wanslake equilibrium. However, imidazol 2 ulidines and triazol 5 ulidines are thermodynamically stable and do not dimerize, and have been stored in solution in the absence of water and air for years. This is presumably due to the aromatic nature of these carbons, which is lost upon dimerization. In fact imidazol 2 ulidines are so thermodynamically stable that only in highly constrained conditions are these carbons forced to dimerize. Chen and Tatin made a doubly tethered diimidazol 2 ulidine by deprotonating the respective diimidazolium salt. Only the deprotonation of the doubly tethered diimidazolium salt with the shorter methylene bridge CH2 resulted in the dicarbene dimer. If this dimer existed as a dicarbene, the electron lone pairs on the carbenic carbon would be forced into close proximity. Presumably the resulting repulsive electrostatic interactions would have a significant destabilizing effect. 
To avoid this electronic interaction, the carbon units dimerize. On the other hand, heteromino carbons e.g. R2NC, OR or R2NC, senior and non-aromatic carbons such as diaminocarbenes e.g. R2NC, NR2 have been shown to dimerize albeit quite slowly. This has been presumed to be due to the high barrier to singlet state dimerization. Diaminocarbenes do not truly dimerize, but rather form the dimer by reaction via formamidinium salts, a protonated precursor species. Accordingly, this reaction can be acid catalyzed. This reaction occurs because unlike imidazoleum based carbons, there is no loss of aromaticity in protonation of the carbon. Unlike the dimerization of triplet state carbons, these singlet state carbons do not approach head to head, least motion, but rather the carbon lone pair attacks the empty carbon p orbital, non least motion. Carbon dimerization can be catalyzed by both acids and metals. Reactivity The chemistry of stable carbons has not been fully explored. However, Enders et al. have performed a range of organic reactions involving a triazol 5 ulidine These reactions are outlined below and may be considered as a model for other carbons. These carbons tend to behave in a nucleophilic fashion e and F, performing insertion reactions B, addition reactions C, 2 plus 1 cycloadditions D, G and H, 4 plus 1 cycloadditions A, as well as simple deprotonations. The insertion reactions B probably proceed via deprotonation, resulting in the generation of a nucleophile minus XR, which can attack the generated salt giving the impression of AHX insertion. The reported stable isothiazole carbon derived from an isothiazoleum perchlorate was questioned, who were only able to isolate 2 amino 2 h theat 4. The intermediate 3 was proposed through a rearrangement reaction. This carbon is no longer considered stable. Carbon complexation imidazol 2 ulidines, triazol 5 ulidines, and less so, diaminocarbenes, have been shown to coordinate to a plethora of elements, from alkali metals, main group elements, transition metals, and even lanthanides and actinides. A periodic table of elements gives some idea of the complexes which have been prepared, and in many cases these have been identified by single crystal X ray crystallography. Stable carbons are believed to behave in a similar fashion to organophosphines in their coordination properties to metals. These ligands are said to be good sigma donors through the carbenic lone pair, but poor pi acceptors due to internal ligand back donation from the nitrogen atoms adjacent to the carbon center, and so are able to coordinate to even relatively electron deficient metals. Enders and Hermann have shown that these carbons are suitable replacements for phosphine ligands in several catalytic cycles. Whilst they have found that these ligands do not activate the metal catalyst as much as phosphine ligands they often result in more robust catalysts. Several catalytic systems have been looked into by Hermann and Enders, using catalysts containing imidazole and triazole carbon ligands, with moderate success. Grubbs has reported replacing a phosphine ligand PCY3 with an imidazol 2 ulidine in the olefin metathesis catalyst RUCL2 PCY3 2CHPH, and noted increased ring closing metathesis as well as exhibiting a remarkable air and water stability. Molecules containing two and three carbon moieties have been prepared as potential bidentite and tridentite carbon ligands. Legend carbon complex with element known no carbon complex with element known carbons in organometallic chemistry and catalysis carbons can be stabilized as organometallic species. These transition metal carbon complexes fall into two categories, fissure carbons in which carbons are tethered to a metal and an electron withdrawing group usually a carbonyl, Schrock carbons, in which carbons are tethered to a metal and an electron donating group. The reactions that such carbons participate in are very different from those in which organic carbons participate. Triplet state carbon chemistry Persistent triplet state carbons are likely to have very similar reactivity as other non-persistent triplet state carbons. Physical properties Those carbons that have been isolated to date tend to be colorless solids with low melting points. These carbons tend to sublime at low temperatures under high vacuum. One of the more useful physical properties is the diagnostic chemical shift of the carbenic carbon atom in the 13 cnmr spectrum. Typically this peak is in the range between 200 and 300 ppm, where few other peaks appear in the 13 cnmr spectrum. 
An example is shown on the left for a cyclic diaminocarbene which has a carbenic peak at 238 ppm. Upon coordination to metal centers, the 13C carbon resonance usually shifts high field, depending on the Lewis acidity of the complex fragment. Based on this observation, Wynne et al. developed a new methodology to determine ligand donor strengths by 13 CNMR analysis of transpalladium carbon complexes. The use of a 13C labeled N heterocyclic carbon ligand also allows for the study of mixed carbon phosphine complexes, which undergo trans cis isomerization due to the trans effect. Applications NHCs are widely used as ancillary ligand in organometallic chemistry. One practical application is the ruthenium-based Grubbs catalyst and NHC palladium complexes for cross-coupling reactions. NHC metal complexes, specifically silver-1 iodide NHC complexes have been widely tested for their biological applications. Preparation methods NHCs are often strongly basic the pKa value of the conjugate acid of an imidazol 2 ulidine was measured at Ca. 24 and react with oxygen. Clearly these reactions are performed using air-free techniques, avoiding compounds of even moderate acidity. Although imidazolium salts are stable to nucleophilic addition, other non-aromatic salts are not i.e. formamidinium salts. In these cases, strong unhindered nucleophiles are avoided whether they are generated in situ or are present as an impurity in other reagents e.g., LiOH in Bouli. Several approaches have been developed in order to prepare stable carbons, these are outlined below. Deprotonation Deprotonation of carbon precursor salts with strong bases has proved a reliable route to almost all stable carbons. IMIDAZOL2 ulidines and DIHYDRO IMIDAZOL2 ulidines, e.g. IMS, have been prepared by the deprotonation of the respective imidazolium and dihydroimidazolium salts. The acyclic carbons and the tetrahydropyrimidinyl based carbons were prepared by deprotonation using strong homogeneous bases. Several bases and reaction conditions have been employed with varying success. The degree of success has been principally dependent on the nature of the precursor being deprotonated. The major drawback with this method of preparation is the problem of isolation of the free carbon from the metals ions used in their preparation. Metal hydride bases one might believe that sodium or potassium hydride would be the ideal base for deprotonating these precursor salts. The hydride should react irreversibly with the loss of hydrogen to give the desired carbon, with the inorganic by-products and excess hydride being removed by filtration. In practice this reaction is often too slow, requiring the addition of DMSO or TBUA. These reagents generate soluble catalysts, which increase the rate of reaction of this heterogeneous system, via the generation of tert butoxide or dimsyl anion. However, these catalysts have proved ineffective for the preparation of non-imidazolium adducts as they tend to act as nucleophiles towards the precursor salts and in so doing are destroyed. The presence of hydroxide ions as an impurity in the metal hydride could also destroy non-aromatic salts. Deprotonation with sodium or potassium hydride in a mixture of liquid ammonia, THF at minus 40 degrees Celsius has been reported for imidazole-based carbons. Ardwengo and co-workers managed to prepare a DIHYDROIMIDAZOL2 ulidine using Na. However, this method has not been applied to the preparation of diaminocarbenes. In some cases, potassium tert butoxide can be employed without the addition of a metal hydride. Alkalithiums the use of alkalithiums as strong bases has not been extensively studied, and have been unreliable for deprotonation of precursor salts. With non-aromatic salts, n buli and PHLI can act as nucleophiles whilst t buli can on occasion act as a source of hydride, reducing the salt with the generation of isobutene. Amides bases Lithium amides like the diisopropylamide LDA and the tetramethylpiperidide LIMP generally work well for the deprotonation of all types of salts, providing that not too much LiOH is present in the n-butylithium used to make the lithium amide. 
Titration of lithium amide can be used to determine the amount of hydroxide in solution. The deprotonation of precursor salts with metal hexamethyldesilazides works very cleanly for the deprotonation of all types of salts, except for unhindered formamidinium salts, where this base can act as a nucleophile to give a triaminomethane adduct. Metal-free carbon preparation the preparation of stable carbons free from metal cations has been keenly sought to allow further study of the carbon species in isolation from these metals. Separating a carbon from a carbon-metal complex can be problematic due to the stability of the complex. Accordingly, it is preferable to make the carbon free from these metals in the first place. Indeed, some metal ions, rather than stabilizing the carbon, have been implicated in the catalytic dimerization of unhindered examples. Shown right is an X-ray structure showing a complex between a diaminocarbene and potassium HMDS. This complex was formed when excess KHMDS was used as a strong base to deprotonate the formamidinium salt. Removing lithium ions resulting from deprotonation with reagents such as LDA can be especially problematic. Potassium and sodium salt byproducts tend to precipitate from solution and can be removed. Lithium ions may be chemically removed by binding to species such as cryptans or crown ethers. Metal-free carbons have been prepared in several ways as outlined below. Decalcogenation Another approach of preparing carbons has relied on the desulfurization of thioreas with potassium in THF. A contributing factor to the success of this reaction is that the byproduct, potassium sulfide, is insoluble in the solvent. The elevated temperatures suggest that this method is not suitable for the preparation of unstable dimerizing carbons. A single example of the deoxygenation of a urea with a fluorine-derived carbon to give the tetramethyldiaminocarbene and fluorinone has also been reported. The desulfurization of thioreas with molten potassium to give imidazol 2 ulidines or diaminocarbenes has not been widely used. The method was used to prepare dihydroimidazole carbons. Vacuum pyrolysis Vacuum pyrolysis, with the removal of neutral volatile by-products CH3OH, CHCl3, has been used to prepare dihydroimidazole and triazole-based carbons. Historically the removal of chloroform by vacuum pyrolysis of D-adducts was used by Wanslick in his early attempts to prepare dihydroimidazol 2 ulidines but this method is not widely used. The Enders Laboratory has used vacuum pyrolysis of a C-adduct to generate a triazolium 5 ulidine C. Bis mercury Bis trimethylsilyl mercury CH3 3 CHGC CH3 3 reacts with chloroaminium and chloroamidinium salts to give a metal free carbon and elemental mercury. For example, CH3 3 CHGC CH3 3 plus R2N equals carbon monochloride NR2 plus Cl minus R2NC, NR2 plus HG L plus CH3 3 CCl. Photochemical decomposition Persistent triplet state carbons have been prepared by photochemical decomposition of a diazomethane product via the expulsion of nitrogen gas, at a wavelength of 300 nm in benzene. Purification Stable carbons are very reactive, and so the minimum amount of handling is desirable using air-free techniques. However, provided rigorously dry, relatively non-acidic and air-free materials are used, stable carbons are reasonably robust to handling per se. By way of example, a stable carbon prepared from potassium hydride can be filtered through a dry sealite pad to remove excess KH and resulting salts from the reaction. On a relatively small scale, a suspension containing a stable carbon in solution can be allowed to settle and the supernatant solution pushed through a dried membrane syringe filter. Stable carbons are readily soluble in nonpolar solvents such as hexane, and so typically recrystallization of stable carbons can be difficult, due to the unavailability of suitable non-acidic polar solvents. 
Air free sublimation as shown right can be an effective method of purification, although temperatures below 60 degrees Celsius under high vacuum are preferable as these carbons are relatively volatile and also could begin to decompose at these higher temperatures. Indeed, sublimation in some cases can give single crystals suitable for X ray analysis. However, strong complexation to metal ions like lithium will in most cases prevent sublimation. References Further reading Reviews on persistent carbons Hopkinson, M. N., Richter, C., Schettler, M., Glorious, F. 2014. An Overview of N-Heterocyclic Carbons. Nature. 510-485-496. Bibcode, 2014 Natur.510, 485H. Doi 10.1038 Nature 13384 PMID 24965649 Carbon chemistry from fleeting intermediates to powerful reagents Chapter 4 Hideo Tomioka Triplet State Chapter 5 Singlet State Roger W Alder ed Guy Bertrand Reactive Intermediate Chemistry by Robert A. Moss, Matthew Platts, Maitland Jones Chapter 8, Stable Singlet Carbons, Guy Bertrand R. W. Alder, in. Diaminocarbenes, Exploring Structure and Reactivity. Ed. G. Bertrand, New York, 2002 M. Regitz, 1996. Stable Carbons Illusion or Reality Anju. Chem. Int. ed. Engl. 30 6, 674-676. doi. 10.1002, ane.1991067411, for a review on the physico-chemical properties electronics, sterics, of N-heterocyclic carbons. T. Droge, F. Glorious 2010. The Measure of All Rings, N Heterocyclic Carbons. Anju. Chem. Int. ed. Engl. 49 39 6940 6952. doi 10.1002, an e.2010, 1024 7104 7107. Closing square bracket.